Hello, this is Brent Winfield. Welcome to another edition of I Didn't Know That. I encourage you to visit adventmessage.com for more information. I also encourage you to send me an email with your questions or comments. You know, it's said that the truth had an appointment in a certain town where the people were very anxiously waiting for him. It was a hot summer day, and the truth was walking along a dusty, narrow road toward the people who were waiting for him. Finally, the heat became unbearable, and as he was going along, he saw through the woods a pond, and Truth thought, you know, I think I'll take a swim. So Truth went aside, pulled off his lovely white garments, and hung them on a branch and jumped into the cool water, enjoying himself on that hot summer day. But you know, wherever the truth goes, lie goes also. And Lai heard that Truth was going into town, and as he followed along behind, he too was caught in the heat. So when Lai came to the pond, he thought, I'll take a swim and cool off a bit. So he went over to get ready to jump into the pond, when suddenly he saw Truth's clothes hanging on the branch. Now because Lai is sneaky, he got a sneaky idea. Ah, Lai said. I'm going to forget about swimming and just steal Truth's clothes. So he threw off his old rags to the ground and put on the pure clothes of Truth and started down the road towards town. When the people saw him coming, they began to rejoice. Here comes the Truth. Until finally one perceptive elder in the town said, No, hold it, people. That's not the Truth. That's a lie with Truth's clothes on. And sure enough, it was. After a while, Truth finished his swim, intending to get dressed and go into town. When he got out, he noticed his clothes were gone, and he was very disappointed. Truth thought to himself, where could his clothes be? And as he looked around, he suddenly spotted the old raggedy garments of a lie. But Truth said to himself, before I wear that, I wouldn't wear anything. So he started down the road, just as he was. When the people saw him coming, they really began to rejoice and shout. They cried out, Look, folks, here comes the truth, the naked truth. And so it was. Friend, today's subject is just like this story, Here Comes the Naked Truth. The great message to prepare our generation for Christ's coming is found in Revelation 14, 6-10. The last phrase of verse 7 directs our attention to the subject of worship saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of water. In the final hour of earth's history, a message is to, be, is to go to the world, to worship Him that made heaven and earth. The obvious problem we're dealing with in Revelation is the difference between Revelation 14.7 and verse 9, one who worships him who made, and the other worships the beast. All the world, including you and me, will be in one side or the other. The shocking reality is, is that God says in Revelation 13, 8, all the world is worshiping and following the beast. So today, if we find an area in which all the world follows the beast instead of the Bible, it should not surprise us, for God has told us it would be so. Since the message of Revelation 14, 7 says to worship him that made heaven and earth, let's go back to the beginning, when God made everything. In Genesis 1, 1, we read, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. On the first day, he created light. Second day, air. Third day, water and vegetation. Fourth day, sun, moon, and stars. Fifth day, birds and fish. Sixth day, animals and the crowning act of creation, man and woman. Here we have the first six days of the history of the world. All was good and complete, created for man's enjoyment and sustenance, gleaming in Edenic perfection. And now we come to the very first seventh day in the history of the world. Genesis 2, 1 to 3. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. 
And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. God created the seventh day Sabbath. This day was set aside as a memorial of his creation. David said in Psalms 111 that God made his works and remembered. God himself said it, wrote it in his law. Exodus 28 to 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy maid servant, thy manservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Now I want you to think and follow my friend, because I know you're probably wondering how we have both days today as the Sabbath, the seventh and the first day. Now some people wonder why some people say the seventh day is a Jewish Sabbath. Think now, how many people were on earth the sixth day? Two. Their names were Adam and Eve. Were they Jews? No. There were no Jews for hundreds of years. God never made the Sabbath for the Jews. This Sabbath, which Christ created, the seventh day, has ever since been a living memorial of His creative power. There were three things God did to specifically set apart the seventh day. He rested on it, blessed it, and sanctified it, or made it holy setting it apart for sacred use. God did not do this to any other day. As we read the full commandment, let's see why. God says, remember. Now, if my wife says, Brent, remember the clothes at the dry cleaners on the way home. Why does she say remember? Because she thinks I might forget. God says, remember. Why? Because he knew we might forget. And it's amazing that the only commandment of the ten, he said, remember, most of the world has forgotten. The fact that our God made heaven and earth sets him apart from all other false gods. No other God can create anything. And so every time you remember the Sabbath day, you're honoring the true God. That's why if this commandment had always been kept, there would be no atheist agnostic, idolater, or skeptic. And evolution would never have been taught in our schools because it is impossible to doubt God or disbelieve Him when you keep the seventh day every week in His honor. And that's also the reason the devil hates God's Sabbath. He wanted to be like God, so he set up his worship day also. This Sabbath command was still binding in Jesus' day. We read in the New Testament in Luke 23, 56, And they returned and prepared spices and ointments, and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. They rested according to the commandment. Jesus died on Good Friday, rested on Sabbath, and rose on Sunday. God gave the Sabbath as the greatest of gifts to us, a time when we fellowship together, a time for the family, a time of physical, mental, and emotional rest. We need this. The reason so many people are uptight today and getting ulcers and heart attacks, the reason husbands and wives quarrel, is because our society is under the gun seven days a week. We need one day to forget everything. God gave it, not as a problem, but as a blessing. Human nature needs an opportunity to regroup, recoup, and refresh. Sabbath becomes this most special day of the week. Furthermore, the Sabbath is a sign of our love relationship with Jesus. We read in Ezekiel 20:20, 20, 20, And hallow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. God said, Hallow my Sabbaths. There will be a sign just between you and me, 24 hours in a special love relationship. Now the devil knows full well the meaning of the Sabbath. Every time God has given something as a blessing, the devil has come up with a counterfeit. That's his trademark. God gave the Sabbath, and the devil knew that by 
the Sabbath honored God above all other commandments. So, in order to detract from the worship of the true God and nullify everything that honors God, he twisted and misconstrued things so much that today most of the sincere Christians in the world is breaking the Sabbath day and don't even know it. So God, in his mercy, sends the naked truth. This is also why the devil teaches that the law has been done away with. Yet, interestingly enough, most of those who teach this still keep nine of the Ten Commandments. One commandment bothers them, and in an effort to set aside the fourth, they do away with the whole law. We've covered this in the previous two video letters, but let's review a few texts, shall we? James 2, 10, 12. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he's guilty of all. For he that said, Do not commit adultery, said also, Do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do, as they shall be judged by the law of liberty. Friend, did Jesus change any of this? Matthew 5, 17-19 says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So now we, if we break one, we break all. Jesus said in Luke 16, 17, It's easier for heaven and earth to pass than for one tittle of the law to fail. One tittle or jot from the law cannot fail. Let's identify the day. What day is the seventh day of the week? Saturday. An almanac, calendar, or encyclopedia will tell you that. But we want to find the Sabbath from the Bible, just to be sure. Let's go to the New Testament, shall we? Matthew 28, 1 reads, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. Jesus died on Good Friday and rose on Easter Sunday. The day between the Sabbath was this day between the two was the Sabbath, Saturday. Let's get another witness. Luke twenty three, fifty four. And that day was a preparation, and the Sabbath drew on. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. First the preparation day, Friday. Next, they rested according to the commandment, Saturday. Then Sunday, Jesus rose. The New Testament, without a doubt, teaches that Saturday is the Sabbath. Now, what day did Jesus keep? We can be safe in doing what Jesus did. In fact, this is what the Bible says we are to do. 1 John 2, 3-6 And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abided in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Let's see then what Jesus' custom was. Luke 4.16 And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Friend, it was Jesus' custom to go to church on Sabbath. In fact, Jesus had so much respect for the Sabbath that he, looking far into the future, asked us to respect it. Matthew twenty four twenty, But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Jesus here looked 40 years into the future and still asked his disciples to honor the Sabbath. If Jesus were expecting his church to keep the Sabbath, looking 40 years into the future, then we can be sure he wanted it to be kept to the end of time. What day did the disciples keep? Acts 13, 14, 42, 44. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia, 
I went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And he goes on to say, And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Here we have New Testament Christians who were living under grace, keeping the Sabbath. Now here's another text found in Acts 18.4. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. Paul preached every Sabbath to the Jews and Greeks. Even without a church, the apostles still kept the Sabbath day, Acts 16.13. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made, and we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. Paul, the great apostle, made a statement in Acts 20:27, 20, For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. He had declared all the counsels of God. Now, if there was a change from Saturday to Sunday, why didn't Paul tell us? Now, there are more than 140 references to the seventh-day Sabbath in the Bible, but there is not one indication of the first day being holy. Now, that ought to shock you. That makes me think, Paul, if you declared all and the Sabbath was changed, why didn't you tell me? There is not even a hint of it in the Bible. Friend, so clear am I on this fact that I am prepared to offer $1,000 to anyone who can find a text in the Bible that says Sunday has been changed, that, that the Sabbath has been changed to Sunday. If you don't believe me, find the text. Often sincere people say, we keep the Lord's day. Did you know that there is only one text in the entire Bible that says Lord's day? Let's read it in Revelation 1.10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. According to this text, which day is the Lord's day? It doesn't say. Let's find from the Bible which day it is. Matthew 12, 8. This is Jesus speaking, by the way. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. Lord of the Sabbath day. And the commandment says the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. There it is. Now some others say, oh, it doesn't matter which day you keep. I keep every day. But here we must be very careful. The same fourth commandment says, Six days are days for labor, not to be kept holy. God didn't say keep a Sabbath. He said keep the Sabbath. The is a definite article defining a specific place or a thing. The Bible says the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord. The Bible says there is a way which seems right to a man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. Proverbs 14.12 We must follow God's word, not human reasoning. Now, some people will also say, well, the days have been mixed up, and we don't really know what, the, what day the Sabbath is. The calendar was changed. Yet, if that's so, well, then Sunday is also wrong. But time hasn't been lost. Yes, the calendar was changed, once since the days of Jesus in 1582 by Pope Gregory. That's where we get our present Gregorian calendar. Prior to the Gregorian calendar, the Julian calendar was used from 46 BC onward. It had the length of the year as 365 days and 6 hours. This was 11 minutes more than it was supposed to be. Over the years, the 11 minutes accumulated and by 1582 the calendar was approximately 10 days out of harmony with the solar system. So it was Thursday, October 4th, 1582, and the next day, Friday, which should have been October 5, became October 15th. The days of the week were not affected at all, only the dates. Today we do the same thing every four years on leap year. And speaking of the calendar, it's a fact that in 108 languages of the world, the seventh day Saturday is called Sabbath. 
there is no question that the Sabbath day today is exactly the same seventh day Jesus kept while he was on earth. Often people will sincerely say, we keep Sunday in honor of the resurrection. Oh, wow, that's a wonderful thought, we must ask. Is it biblical? You see, God did give two things to honor his death, burial, and resurrection. First, he gave communion and said, this do in remembrance of me, Luke 22, 19. Secondly, he gave baptism as a memorial, not a new Sabbath. And so from Eden to Eden, there will always be a Sabbath. From creation, all throughout the Old Testament, it was kept. Then Jesus in the four Gospels kept it. Then the early Christians in the New Testament kept it. And when we go to heaven and God creates the new heaven and the new earth, we're also going to keep it there. Isaiah 66, 23 For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, said the Lord. Friend, Jesus has sent the message of revelation in love, inviting you and I today to worship him on his holy day, inviting us to love him and keep his commandments, inviting us into that rest that can restore our physical emotional and spiritual lives. Let's enter into that rest as Hebrews 4, 4, 7, 11 invites us. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, God rested the seventh day from all his works. Again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Friend, this is Brent Winfield of AdventMessage.com. Remember, God loves you. He really does.